Wind Diddley and welcome to my garage. My name's Fred Hope, my username's Epo Derv, Fred Hope backwards. We're in the perineum of the year between the front piece, which is Christmas, and the rear piece, which is New Year. I'm in the garage, I'm trying to fix an issue that I had riding my Honda Super Cub 125. I thought I'd lost the thing I haven't. My Honda Super Cub 125. Um, from my house to Land's End and back, my phone kept falling off because I had a terrible, cheap, here's one I prepared earlier, phone mount like this. It's gently sprung, and as soon as you hit a pothole, the phone flies out. It was attached with a, a relatively stout sort of clamping mount made by Yulanzi, which I think is a type of Chinese industrious chimpanzee. Um, but it was no good. However, I've got this hangover from when I had other bikes, a Honda Blackbird and a uh, Toyota, Toyota Triumph Daytona. So I'm going to try and attach this to the wing mirror stalk, the wing mirror stalk of each bike. Um, <coughs> let's show you the thing, do the measurements, and then attach the thing to the stuff. First things first, you're going to want to measure the thing that you're attaching the thing and the other stuff to. For that, I use this. It's called a vernier caliper. It looks a bit complicated, but it costs about, I think mine was £12. There's a bloke called Jeffrey Beavis. Uh, he's got this website called Amazon, which he named after some woods in Brazil. You get this, and you can measure anything you want with it. So, um, body parts. Here we go, look, I'm going to measure my septum. 7.17 mil septum, cool. Uh, the width of a tooth. My front right incisor is 9.03 mil. Uh, just take a look down here. 20.69 mil, I think it must be broken, but um, anyway, I can talk to Alan about that. The thing I needed to measure was the fatness of the stalk. If anyone ever says what's the fatness of your stalk, say hold on, I'll just pop in the garage. So using this, hold on, I'm gonna show you properly. Okay, you're gonna to wanna to know how to use one of these. It's got a thumb wheel on, open her up, and it just gives a readout of exactly how wide the hole is. So what you wanna do is get the, the, the jaws of the vernier caliper wider than the thing you wanna measure, and then you just close it down onto the thing that you're measuring. Thus, just the tip, and that is telling me that it's 9.93 millimeters wide. So again, we'll check on the Super Cub 125. Again, I'm just going to slide the jaws over, make sure it's nice and tight, and then pull it back. 10.13 mil. The stalks are 10 mil for holding the mirrors on a Super Cub 125 and a Cub 90 in this case. Every day is a school day, and today we're going to learn some of the additional functionality of Vernon's caliper. So, here goes. I've got uh, a tea mug here. This one's enamel. Uh, you don't always have to use enamel ones. You can use other ones too. So I'm going to open the jaws of my Vernon's caliper. If ever you're questioned about the thickness of your rim, you can say, oh, my rim is approximately 7.73 mil wide. There's also these two guys on the back here, these two prongs. Let's open those out and we can find out the width of the internal diameter of a mug. It doesn't have to be a mug, it could be other stuff like um, a bolt hole or something. But in this case, without wishing to sound too boastful, uh, the inner diameter of my mug is 92.44 mil. And the last measurement that you can take with Vernon's caliper concerns the sting or the tail. You plop it down into a hole, in this case a mug, made of enamelled metal. And then you just rest the rim on the edge of something, or rather the little edge down there. And then you can say, oh well, my mug is... 78.41-ish 
millimetres deep. And that answers the question posed in the song, how deep is your mug? In this case, 78.41 mil, your measurement might vary. So here we are. Inside the little Ziploc bag from Jeffrey Beavis's website about the woods in Brazil came this little guy. It's just a two-parted plastic clamp, uh, two stainless steel fixings with stainless steel nylock nuts on the end, and it's even got a little Allen key. So what we're going to do now is attach it either to the stalk of a Cub 90 or indeed a Cub 125, get the foam mount attached to it, slap it about a bit and see how she's... Um, Going to respond to that. Hi guys! So here we are, I'm just going to move this thing. Okay, so for people slightly more well endowed in the um, mirror antenna stalk area, there is a little plastic insert inside this which means that you can take it out oh God. and increase the girth of the, um, the cavity between the two parts as it is just reaching for the free allen key there as it is you're going to have to um, use the insert on this clamp for a honda cub for the simple reason that the um, the wing mirror stalks aren't very chunky so i'm going to go for one first just to get it through the hole oh yeah now we know so I'm just stuffing it through, get your little nylock nut on the end here, oh yeah. So if anyone asks, is it secured with a nylock nut, you can say, of course it is. And they say, oh, what happens when you go to the, the lizard or land's end? Isn't it going to rust away to nothing? One word, stainless. So. Come on, let's see, let's... Right, does this have enough succulent clamping power to make sure that my ball is not flapping around in the wind? I hope so. Because obviously balls flapping around in the wind is no good for anyone. I don't think this is going to be clamping tightly enough which means I might have to go and talk to a friend about machining me some sort of insert improvement thing. Well, I don't know, maybe. Well, I suppose you could just plump up your mirror stalk with some... Oh no, 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 no. She's clamped nicely. Okay, we're clamped, we're ripped with gripped. Let me get the uh, phone mount. Yoo-hoo! Okay, slide the mouth over the ball. If it makes a strange sort of thudding noise, you've got it right. Tighten the, the wing nut on the front. Don't get the nuts and the balls mixed up. Oh yeah, now we know. And then, just tighten that as hard as it'll go. And then just get a telephone. If you haven't got if you haven't got your own telephone, just nick one. Um, and then that goes in there thus. Oh man. Okay, just get the angle of the dong hole right. There we go. So, yeah. Now we're talking. And now it means that you can watch YouTube videos as you're riding along, which is awesome. So if you've got a Cub 90 or a Cub 125 that you want to attach a phone to, um, just get one of these mounts made by the six-year-old Chinese kids in uh, Jeff Beavis's Amazon Woods website, and uh, that'd be brilliant. I've made a load of other videos as well, so you could watch those or not. Your time is your own, so do what you like. Cheers then. <sighs> Mixed feelings about this. You can see there that the aperture is grabbing on but there's some sort of room and it oh I say that it's actually quite hard to move but with a bit of leverage oh it does take a bit oh maybe it'll be all right just a little phone jiggling about there time will tell um, so we'll see whether this mount stays still with a phone on it whilst I'm doing some extreme uh, cub activities 
um, but it's going to be a darn sight better than what I had on there and I know for a fact you can't knock a phone out of this particularly with the leather leather well, rubber just as bad uh, thing that holds the phone in even stronger than just the four uh, tentacles which were already doing a good job thanks round mount